I've spent so much time in the costume armory shop. It's magic to me. I don't understand how it's done or how they do it or how it's made. I just love the fact that it exists. The challenge was how do we make armor that feels different and used and appropriate for our show. We originate and make all of the structured costumes and body armors for the show. So anything that's not soft costume, that's a little bit unusual, we'll make it. I like working with Simon because nothing is impossible. When you design armor and you refuse to think about how complicated it is, because if I start thinking what could be easy, then I don't design beautiful armor. <laughs> and that I think is going to be Simon's problem. It's maybe very egoistic, but it works. <laughs> so I keep on doing it. And uh, he always makes it happen. Essentially, we're part of Jani's team, part of the costume department. So she has control over the overall look, but we have a dialogue with Jani and the concept artist, and we try and develop the look for each character, very much to try and convey a sense of what the characters are about, where they're from, the level of status within the society. Before we start anything, it's months of prep and collecting references and visiting museums, and as far as we can, going to primary sources for reference. We've tried very hard to ground this into the universe that we're creating, so whilst they might look to different influences and so on, everything is unique in itself. I would say in terms of unique originations, there's probably 14, 15, something like that. And actual builds, we're on somewhere between 190 and 200 sets of more or less head-to-toe armor. I come from a background of making armor many years ago, so functionality and comfort are a really big consideration. To have something that's so form-fitting and rigid, it sort of makes you assume a posture that I found very helpful. Beginning tonight, King's Landing will learn to fear the color gold. Damon invented the gold cloaks. Essentially, they were just the city watch before that, but they didn't have uniforms, and Damon gave them the gold cloak and trained them and put them in the uniform that we know really up to the original series. They look very powerful with that yellow and black. But in order of having the yellow looking macho, I needed to have it in opposition with black, and that create a very strong image. If I had put it with any other color, I think they would have looked weaker. It has the feel of almost an industrial manufacturing vibe to it, almost a mass manufactured look to it. Killing somebody else, I mean, that was their thing. I mean, this looks horrible, but that's, <laughs> that was their hobby. <laughs> there are probably thousands of small metal plates. Each of the metal plates has chemically etched detail on the surface. We were trying to give it a feeling of corrosion that shows that there's a lot of age, use, and time that's gone into these. But it's a small detail, you really have to focus in to see it. Um, thousands of rivets holding it all together. We made about 55 of those, and that includes Harwin Strong, the commander of the City Watch. I can tell you it weighs a lot more than it looks. It's sort of like having a 17-year-old hanging off your back for entire days. It's such a large piece of armor. It's more or less fully covering head down to mid-calf in terms of length. Jani wanted it to almost look robotic, so it has quite a powerful silhouette. And the silhouette of these things really should convey the nature of what's inside. So it's very blocky, it's very solid, it looks very powerful, big shoulders going on. All of those were considerations during the modeling and patterning on this. When we finally get to see the gold cloaks on screen, I would say the first feeling is a feeling of relief that we got there, because <laughs> it was a monumental undertaking after all those hundreds and possibly thousands of hours to get there. And to see the actors and the extras putting them on and start to believe in what it is that they're conveying. And it's great for the crew and everyone involved 
To see all that on set, because there's a lot of work and dedication that's gone into that, and everybody really cares about every stage of what it is that they're making, and they're trying to make it look as real as possible, because it is. I mean, it's real materials, it's real things.